Hi everyone, my name is Diksha. Um, before we begin with the presentation, I'll just add on a little to my journey. So um, I decided that I would do, uh, I would pursue dentistry in the US later towards my internship. I wasn't really sure before that. Um, so this is what I did to get into DDS. Um, the process can be really daunting in the beginning, but trust me, it's all worth it. So during my house off as an, in, in the Department of Oral Pathology, that gave me some teaching and research experience. It took me around nine months to prepare for part one and part two of MBD and uh, to take both the exams. I did some observership while I was writing these exams in the US. Um, observership meaning you can just go to any dental clinic wherever you are staying and ask the doctor that can I shadow you for some time. So basically it's just that simple. Um, then I did preceptorship. So what is preceptorship? It's basically like a training program in periodontology. So uh, you just go and um, assist the residents over there. You assist in implant surgeries or bone graft surgeries and various uh, soft tissue uh, surgeries um, in periodontology. So the reason I chose to do preceptorship in periodontology is because UCLA is a unique school which offers this course for a minimum of three months and a maximum of 12 months. If you do this course for nine months, it uh, provides you with, the, with an F1 visa or, and also gives you the permit to work in US for one year. So this was my safety net. Like this, this program allowed me to work in US for a year. So in case I do not get through DDS in first cycle, I can stay in the US for another year and apply for another cycle. Uh, uh, because I got my work permit, so I started working as a dental assistant. Meanwhile, I was also interviewing schools. Um, so one month into the assistantship, I figured out that I got, uh, I got accepted at University of Michigan and four months only like working after four months, I had to leave my job and I had to start with my DDS, which was a good news after all. Okay, so let's get into the presentation. Welcome to 10 steps of, 10 steps into DDS. So first thing is dent pin. Now what is dent pin? It is, okay, it is a unique identification number that is obtained by any individual who is going to be associated with dental education in the US. It's very easy. Just go to this website, American Academy, Dental Academy, and then go to Education Careers over here, and then you can register a number. So this will generate a number, which will be your identification number, basically. Whenever you are applying to, for any forms, this will be your identification number, and it's free of cost. This is the first step. Now, second step is ECE evaluation. So basically, um, it's a form of evaluation which converts our percentage system to the US GPA system. There is a fee for it. I think it's approximately $160. This is the website. Uh, before you apply to this, make sure you have a US address because when the EC sends back your document, it will only send, send back to a US address. So you need to have that. Like it can be your it can be anybody's address that you know. Now, what do we send to EC? Basically, when you are in your internship or when, you are, when you've done with your BDS, what documents do you need from the school? This is like a very frequently asked question. First is your graduate dental degree. I know in our school, it might be like difficult to get this, but this is required, unfortunately. Then the second is in com uh, internship completion certificate. Third is transcript, your five-year mark sheet, clerkship letter, and migration certificate. Everything you'll get from the academic section, but clerkship letter is something which the dental school administration would make it for you. So when I was in, in um, BPKHS, uh, Seva Didi, she made it for me. I don't know um, if you guys know her or not, but she was in the dental administration. But there is a fee for it, so you have to go through the process. 
Now what you do is you collect all these certificates, you make photocopies of it, and you get them attested from the dean. Make sure it is all these uh, certificates are stamped and sealed. And then you need to get at least five copies of your dental degree and five copies of transcript. Rest, one copy is more than enough. Then you, then you put all these documents in a sealed envelope and then you mail it to uh, ECE. You mail it to this website, ECE. In a couple of weeks, they'll send, you, send your GPA certificate to you. Now the third step is applying to NBD. What is NBD? It is National Board Dental Examination. It has two parts, one and two. Um, this is the website, JCNDE. It's called Joint Commission on National Examination. Uh, you go to this website, right under the examinations tab here, you can see there is NBDE part one application. Um, you, you click on that application, you have to pay the fee. There's $380 for the part one exam and $125 one time processing fee to uh, just apply for the exam. Once you've applied, wait for two to three days for the process to go through. After the process has gone through, you can schedule your exam. Okay. So now there is something called as integrated NBD. So JCND decided that they don't want to do part one and part two anymore. They want to do integrated NBD, which is only one exam, which has 900 questions. The cost is $800. Starting August 1, 2020, you can only register for NBD integrated one. Now, if you register before August, you can still take the two part exam. You can take part one until 31st of October and part two until the 1st of August, 2022. But uh, part one is only available until 31st of October, 2020, and that too you have to apply before the 1st of August. So they, this is the new thing that they're trying to do. So it's like basically you have to study more because it's two exam combined into one. Now, um, the material is the same, same as part one and part two. There is something called a CASPER test. This is new because of COVID. So this is only for this cycle. I'm not sure whether it's going to be available for the next cycle or not. CASPER test is nothing. It's an online test. It's available on, in the website. Uh, so basically, it's like, an, it's like they have questions based on ethical dilemmas. They'll give you a clinical scenario based on ethical dilemma, and you just have to answer them. You don't need any preparation on it. Okay, moving on. Okay, so the reason I'm telling you all everything in a little detail is because I really struggled myself. Uh, I had very limited resources when I was going through this process. So I hope uh, this this will give you an early start in your preparation. Fourth step is applying for US visa. So if, for, as we all know that NBD can only be taken in the United States. It, you cannot write the exam anywhere else. That's why you need a visa to come here and write the exam. So first step would be applying for a B1, B2. It's a very simple online application. Uh, you deposit a fee at the bank. Once, you're, once you have deposited, you upload the voucher schedule an interview but one thing you have to remember is uh, when you go for the interview always carry your nbde test registration copy because you need to tell them that this is why you are going to the us to write the exam La hopefully the visa is approved <laughs> okay so now the fifth step is taking the exam itself there is a center called as prometric test center you can Google Prometric Test Center and you can schedule your exam. You can also move your exam, but there is a fee attached to it. So part one, if you choose to do part one and part two and not the integrated, part one is basic science and dental material. Part two is clinical subjects. Um, let me put this here. Part two is clinical subjects and pharma. Um, so what I used as study material for this is dental decks. You have to have to study dental decks. It has everything that you need for the exam. It is also available in PDF format online. You can just download and print. You don't need to purchase it. 
Second is ASDA release exams. ASDA is American Student Dental Association. So they have like combined previous exams and they release it on their website. You can download it, it's for free. And the third is first aid. So very, we are very familiar with first aid for USMLE, but there is first aid for NBD as well. Uh, I only did the dental material part from first aid and uh, did the rest from DEX. I think it was more than enough. Dental DEX is more than enough to pass the exam. You only need a 75% to pass the exam. Uh, there are 900 questions. It is a one and a half day exam, so it is vigorous, but it's doable. Okay. Also, when talking about materials, there are a lot of groups like Facebook study groups. You can find multiple study partners in Facebook. Then there is an app which is called as Dental Board Mastery app. You can also use that app to practice questions. And um, there is also a group called a study for boards. So in, in Facebook, so these are like really helpful. They even share like past questions. Okay, moving on. Um, Sixth part is, part is TOEFL. So TOEFL is test of English for, as a foreign language. It is a mandatory English proficiency exam. You can register this test at the ETS. You can just Google ETS and then you can register for the test. I think it still costs $180. It can be taken in Nepal at the Prometric Test Center. It has four parts, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Overall, a, a score of more than 100 out of 120 is preferred. So why do I say that is because most of the dental schools prefer that you score more than 100. They have like a cutoff. And some schools also want a sub-score. Like, for example, they say that you have to score 24 in your reading. So know this before you take your test. Work hard so that you don't have to do it again. And uh, I, I would just like to mention, like, when I was doing my preparation, I came across this education center. Uh, I have the contact mentioned over here. There are other centers as well, but personally I came across the center and I found them to be very helpful and they are very, very well versed with the process application of NBD towards DDS. So you can check them out or you can explore other options as well. Um, okay, so the seventh is CAPID. Now what is CAPID? CAPID is like, an application portal. Like in Nepal, uh, what we do is we write uh, entrance exam for different schools, right? Like BPKHS has its own exam um, or maybe teaching has its own exam. But in CAPID, it's a directory. It's one common directory to apply to all the schools. If you just Google ADA CAPID directory, you will come to this page. So this page has a list of all the dental schools and everything that, uh, sorry, everything that they require, like part one, part two, everything. Now, another thing is pass. So there is an option which not many of us know that, um, let me tell you what pass stands for. It is postdoctoral, um, okay, postdoctoral application support service. So you can apply to US for a master's degree directly, you don't have to do DDS. You can directly apply for master's through a pass portal. But there is a catch. The catch is that you can only practice in five states after you graduate. Uh, so that sometimes is difficult for some people, but it is totally doable. After you practice in five states for five years, you can practice in all 50 states. So that is something like, I wish I knew before. Okay, so in CAPID, it's a big portal. It's like a huge form and you just put in your information. First thing, you need a personal statement. You need, you need to write your story. Second is you need to upload, sorry, you need to upload NMC certificate of permanent registration. You need to uh, keep working on continuing dental education, like attend workshops, go for volunteer programs, um, do online courses. There are a lot of online free CVC courses. Then observership or shadowing. It may be in US, it may be in Nepal. Third is a solid resume and make sure you have three letters of recommendation. While you're in your dental school, it's a good opportunity to get these letters done. One has to come from the dean of your school, of your dental college. 
one has to be from your faculty and the third it can be from someone in the us or it can be someone in, from nepal uh, from your dental college uh, faculty as well it does not have to be from the us but they prefer if it's from the us they what does what does the dental school want when they're taking an applicant right so if you have like if you have a solid resume if you're working on your observership shadowing continuing education like i did preceptorship to strengthen my resume so you know these things they look for you don't have to have a 4.0 gpa you don't have to be the top student of your class but if you are an all rounder you'll definitely get through okay this is the application portal this is the the you just google capit application you come across this page you create an account then the the final portion is interview if you get interview there are multiple types of interviews that happen introduction multiple mini interviews group discussion clinical scenarios well we can come that to come to that later once you get an interview also be be mindful that there is something called as bench test which is a practical skills test that every school takes so this is a friend of mine this is how it looks like there is a mannequin over here you wear loops you may you may not and then um, they may ask you to prepare a class 1 on a typhodont or a class 2 or a crown preparation ninth step is getting into a dental school well congratulations but this is only half of your journey uh, the fact is that the second half is managing the finances and trust me it can be a huge huge burden to manage finances because average cost of a dental school is 100 to 200 thousand dollars it is a lot but it is very difficult to manage that from nepal but there is a solution you get private dental loan in the us you can apply for a loan but the thing is that you need to know someone who has a green card or who is a citizen who can co-sign your loan on your behalf uh it is difficult but it is doable the reason why i say that it is worth it is because you can pay off your loan within 2 years of graduating as a general dentist and it is very very lucrative in us um it's it's all worth it in the end it's a two year dental program so these the logos of different schools that you can say you see here we can be proud because every school has someone from bpk ch studying in these so i think that's like a huge achievement for us the school the course goes by the name like itdp ppid dds dmd these are just different names that Uh, different schools are given to the two year foreign dental program so don't get confused if you see these names okay moving on the last is just like nmc even in us we have to give we have to do something called as cdca or reb it's like a state board exam um this is the last step and uh, once you clear a state exam it's very easy it's fairly easy it has a written and a clinical part and then you get a license to practice in dds in the us well things don't work out always and there is but there is always a way f- there is a plan b you can also do masters in public health you can do masters in health administration uh, act is um, a program act's um, advanced clinical training and restorative ucla um, actually has a program called act then there is preceptorship programs research assistance so all these programs are a detour a way to get you in the us so that you can achieve your dream of pursuing dentistry in the us so okay and then at the end i would like to say that i am always available if there are any questions feel free to reach out to me and uh, then uh what i to want to take more time but i just want to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity and thank you for being such a lovely audience and wish you all the best for your future and i'll be taking questions at the end of the program thank you uh, so um someone asked me like do we get paid while doing dds um the answer is no we don't get paid in fact we have to pay a tuition so while you're studying dds you have to pay tuition 
but once you're done with DDS, the pay is really, really good so that you can uh, cover the cost of tuition within two years of your earning. So hope I've answered that. And the next question is, do we need research papers and case reports, etc., while applying in dental school? It's good to have research. Um, it's good to have research experience. It's good to have case reports. It doesn't matter whether it's a case report or research experience. So if you're applying for a master's program directly, then yes, a research background is very, very helpful. But if, if you're applying uh, to a DDS program, uh, then no, it's not a compulsion to have research. Um, even without research, people get accepted all the time. Uh, yes, after doing postgraduate, you cannot practice directly. But yeah. suppose you do your postgraduate in Nepal, you can come to the US to do a PhD, but yeah. at the same time, you can also serve as a faculty in an academy. So basically, if you do not have a US uh, dental license, you can teach in US, but you cannot practice on your own. Yes. Yes. Um, so there is like a, there are multiple shortcuts. So yeah. I did the actual process, but there is something, presentation of Bonita, something called as ACT. Yeah. So one year short course, so a two year short course. So you just do that courses. The cost is also less. Um, yeah. One fourth of what you pay for DDS. Okay, once you do that course, you can take the board exam, the license exam, and you can work as a dentist. The only issue is you can work in eight states, only eight states out of 50. But if you work in one state for five years, then you can work in all 50 states. So the logistics is a little issue. I'll just address other few questions that I am getting in the chat. So, um, okay. Yeah. To apply for NBD, can we apply without any work experience? Yes, you can apply without any ex work experience. In fact, I encourage you to start applying um, or actually starting the application process in your internship as well itself. You definitely need your um, dental degree to apply, but you can start the process, like you can start building your resume, writing your personal statement, studying for the exam. So these are the things that you can do way ahead and you don't need any experience. You can also apply without shadowing or observing in the US. You can directly apply from Nepal. Yeah. There's another question. How difficult is it to get college after passing NBD? It is very difficult. Fortunately, uh, we are from Nepal and some dental schools like Minnesota, they, they uh, prefer diversity. So we kind of get like a chance, better chance compared to someone from India because there are so many people applying from India. So um, some schools prefer diversity, so there's a better chance for us. But, um, but the main thing is um, if you have a good resume, uh, it's only a matter of time. You will get it. Okay, there's another question. Since we do not get paid during DDS, isn't it difficult to pay the loan during the tenure? Um, yes, uh, it is. Diff so basically what happens is you take the loan and you only start paying six months after you have graduated. You don't have to pay the loan when you are in the school. So this is how private loan over here works. Uh, they'll give you the loan for two years tuition at once or maybe for one year tuition. And then um, you just pay. I have taken loan. I am not paying anything right now. I, have, I will start paying after six months of my graduation. And one important thing, because we're talking about loan, so once you get your job right, you can transfer all the loan into a federal loan. Then your co-signer has, like, like you free your co-signer. Once you've transferred um, all the loan in a federal loan, you pay less interest. 
So these are like there are a lot of things in detail. You can email me personally, and I can go over with you personally. Um, yeah, I don't want to eat up a lot of time. So the next question is, um, what do you recommend, DDS or dire direct residency? I think it's personally, um, it's a personal choice. Um, yes, direct residency is a very good option, but it's very very difficult. It's five times more difficult than getting into DDS. But I would not discourage you not to apply because I know a lot of people who've gotten in directly. So do apply, but also apply for DDS. So you know, so that you have a backup plan that okay, if that doesn't work out, then I'll do this. So you can apply to both together. Uh, the next question is INBD and NBD ko porne sources same ho ki different in so. So the sources is the same. Online, if you online kinangoy um, bani, if you go purchase, uh, they will sell you a different material for INBD. But uh, a friend of mine, he, they, he, I think he bought the material, but turns out it's the same. So whatever is available for part one and part two, you can just read that for I, INB, integrated NBD. The okay, next question, DDS Garda, okay, DDS Garda, part-time job, Kossari, Pune Clinic, Ma Garna Milsa. So as an international student, we cannot work we can only work if you have a work permit. Like how I studied for one year and I obtained a work permit, which is called as OPT, Optional Practical Training. That is only how you can work. But because you're a student jobs, like what I do is I, uh, I work at the front desk in the library. So I don't have to do anything. I have to just go and sit in the library and they pay me what like 10 to $12 an hour. That just covers my rent. It covers my personal um, expenses. So that is the way. Uh, but when you take loan, you don't only take loan for your tuition, you also take loan for your personal expenses, which covers everything. So you don't have to worry about how to pay for your utilities or that when you're studying. But yes, you can do a part-time job, but not in a clinic, but in the school. Uh, you can be like an advisor. So... There are very good jobs. These are not menial jobs. Uh, next question, I'll just move on quickly. Um, is, okay, is BDS and DDS the same? No. Um, yes, it's the same, basically. But if you do it in Nepal or Asian, Southeast Asia, it's called BDS. But if you do it in US, it's called DDS. It's the same. But for us to um, obtain a... For, for us to practice in the U.S., you have to go to the U.S. and do more, do two more years of DDS in order to get license. Like that is mandatory. So that is why you do DDS. I hope um, it's clear. How much money we should have as a backup to sustain over a period of DDS over there? So um, when you're applying, uh, I would say it totally depends on how many schools you want to apply to because uh, every school has a fee of around $200. So yes, when what I did is I covered the cost through my dental assistant job that I was working. So I only paid for my preceptorship program. I took help for the preceptorship program, but after my preceptorship, since I was working as a dental assistant, I was able to pay for my application that you can also apply for a credit card over here. Um, you can, there are other sources, um, but yes, application process you have to manage that by yourself. You only get a loan for tuition, okay? But exactly, it's, it's a diff it's difficult to put down a number, but I would say somewhere around five thousand dollars. You need to have that before for the application process. Okay, uh, what about Canada system and what is earning difference all after between USA, Canada and European nations? So um, Canada is a similar exam, but they call it NDBE, not NBDE. Uh, but the practical is very, very difficult. What I've heard. I haven't taken the exam myself, though I live just four hours away from Canada. Um, so 
it is difficult. It's not as lucrative as US, but the taxes are very, very high in Canada. So if you earn more, you lose more basically because the taxes are very high because health insurance is free in Canada. That's why the taxes are high. So that way you lose some amount of money if you work in Canada. But since there are so many visa issues going on in the US, Canada can be an option. Um, European nations, I don't know how that works because I know some, a lot of like, um, there's a batchmate of mine from BPKHS who is applying for the UK process. Um, I don't know. I know it's lucrative, like it's well, uh, it's well paid. Dentist in, uh, dentistry is well paid in uh, European countries, but I don't know the, I don't know about the process, I'm sorry.